Pandemonium at the podium. First tonight on our news live at 7. The weekly OPM press briefing turns volatile as the financial secretary clashes with a reporter over allegations of lying. This as the Davis administration misses the 2023-2024 budget target. The economic affairs minister explains the shortfall. Plus, we hear from you. Residents react to the 2024-2025 budget. Then in our news at 7.30, the opposition leader still critical of government's budget, taking exception to plans to acquire the dilapidated International Bazaar on Grand Bahama. Our news live at 7 starts right now. Welcome to our news live at 7. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Candino Knowles. What started as a routine weekly press briefing at Office of the Prime Minister rapidly escalated into a heated confrontation between the financial secretary and a reporter. The tensions peaked when the reporter accused Wilson of lying, prompting him to report or to retort with a menacing promise to confront him outside. Bertie McDermott, who was present during the explosive exchange, has the full story. Mr. Wilson, no, you called me a liar. So why? No, 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 you called me a liar. Yes, sir. And it quickly went downhill from there. The office of the Prime Minister's weekly press briefing rocked by chaos this morning after a Nassau Guardian reporter posed this question to Financial Secretary Simon Wilson. The last time you were here, uh, you lied to us when he asked you about JDL in particular. I, you lied to the media? You lied to how do I? You told, that's uh, a very strong, media. A strong word. Wilson and Economic Affairs Minister Michael Halkidis were brought on to answer questions about the 2023-2024 budget communication Wednesday. But things quickly took a turn after the first question. Wilson visibly taken aback. We have a history. I fired you. Okay. I fired you for lying. A well-documented history. And you come here and call me a liar. Acting Press Secretary in the Office of the Prime Minister, Keishla Adderley, sought to calm the situation and move on to the other questions. But Wilson seemed only to get more upset. I can't, I can't, I can't be here with this. My, are you smiling? <laughs> you, you. The Financial Secretary's efforts to move past the moment were seemingly unsuccessful after he walked away from the podium as the exchange didn't end there. Wilson approached the reporter, prompting Halkidis to get in between. Don't, don't, don't get too close. No, don't, you come here and try to come out here. You, don't do it. I walk with you. The reporter was later escorted out a side door by communications director Latre Ramming. Halkidis took to the podium and continued the briefing. In the end, Halkidis sought to defend Wilson's character while utterly condemned what she called a personal attack against a government official. Uh, and I can say for the financial secretary, working with him over many years, um, you know, never had any reason to question his integrity. I condemn in the strongest terms what happened here this morning. Uh, the intent was for the financial secretary uh, to speak about or flesh out some of the issues discussed in the uh, budget communication. Reporting for our news, I'm Berthony McDermott. Meanwhile, Wilson issuing a statement calling that incident unfortunate, also saying that the accusation was a direct and unprovoked attack on his reputation, character and service to country, and he later apologized. The Free National Movement also weighing in in a statement FNM Chairman Dr. Dwayne Sands said Bahamians were shocked and horrified to see the dismissive, aggressive and belligerent posture of the financial secretary who he called the most senior public servant. Dr. Sands says Wilson should be mandated to undergo anger management therapy and conflict resolution training during a mandatory suspension or dismissal from public duty. You can read both full statements at Our News Bahamas on Facebook. Meanwhile, the Davis administration falling short of achieving its budget target for the 2023-2024 fiscal year, and Economic Affairs Minister Michael Alkidis is explaining the fort shortfall. During his budget communication, Prime Minister Philip Davis announced government will slash the deficit to $69.8 million. This would be the deficit, bring the deficit to 0.5% of gross domestic product. Alkidis telling reporters how things happened. 
And w one of the biggest things is, if you're following the international press, you'll see, for example, that um, across the world, central banks are raising interest rates. We had an increase in interest expense on some of, the, um, some of our outstanding debt that's in US dollars. You've seen interest rate expense go up. And during the course of the year, I mean, you know, we do a budget, we plan, we think such and such is going to happen. Sometimes we have emergencies, sometimes um, think we have to address matters. Some, some costs are higher than, than we think. Um, sometimes we project it for the revenue. We mentioned the, on the real estate. And government is projecting it will achieve between 1 and 1.5 percent of the deficit target by the end of the year. How Kitas confident that that target will in fact be met. When you see the outturn for this uh, fiscal year uh, in a few months, because we have uh, the remainder of May, just a few days in May and June to complete the fiscal year, you will actually see the performance of the government. And so, you know, I hear the, the predictions and, um, you know, you're not going to do it, the Dominant Globe, you're not going to do it. It's going to be done. It has been done in, in the past two years where we've, we've performed and we're going to continue to do it. And tonight we hear from you, the residents most affected by this budget. Is the government borrowing too much? Was excessive spending involved? And is enough being done for our family islands? Joshua Williams hits the streets to gather your feedback in less than five minutes. But for now, it's time for your first look at temperatures. Meteorologist Greg Thompson is in the Weather Center. Greg? Yeah, thanks, Kandino, and happy Thursday evening, everybody. A very warm day around the islands. Temperatures managed to get up into the low to mid-90s. We had heat indices into the triple digits. We still have a heat advisory uh, in effect for the extreme northwest Bahamas. That includes the islands of Grand Bahama, Bimini, and the Abacos. Looks like that heat is spreading towards the south. We are still warm outside our studios right now, 86 degrees. Mostly clear skies. Your winds out of the north, northeast at 9 miles per hour. Your feels like temperature hanging out in the mid-90s, so it's very warm on the outside. Temperatures right now around the islands, it's 86 in Freeport, 82 over in Marsh Harbor, Abaco. We pick up 85 in Alistown, Bimini. 87 in Nicholstown, the Big Yard, Andros, you guys, in, in Great Harbor Key here in the capital, also 86. Governor's Harbor, 84. Central Bahamas, 85. Kemp's Bay, 83s in Arthurstown, Catalan, Georgetown, Exuma, Deadman's Key Island, 82. Coburn Town, San Salvador, 84. And into the southeast Bahamas, temperatures also in the low to mid 80s. With 84 in Duncan Town, Ragged Island, and in Colonel Hill, Cricket Island. You guys up in Colonel Hill, Cricket Island, you have some showers and isolated thunderstorms nearby. Delectable Bay, 83, 82 in Abrams Bay, and a pair of 85s in the Turks and Caicos Islands, as well as in Matthew Town in Agua. Satellite and radar composite. We have two little weak boundaries that moved into the northwest Bahamas. The first one into the central Bahamas right now, and the other one just clipping uh, the New Providence area. But Boundary, a little weak surface trough, uh, still moving towards the southeast, but the boundaries are weakening. A couple of isolated showers associated with that, but at the surface, we are still under the influence of high pressure and some uh, drier and warm air mass, and that's going to continue to keep us rather warm for the remainder of the week. That's a quick check on conditions around the island. Stick with us. So look at your extended forecast is still to come. Thanks, Greg. And still to come on our news, our news to the island series, discovering the charm of Landrail Point Cricket Island. But first, we hear from you. Residents react to the 2024-2025 budget when our news returns. Water this clear, people this friendly, views this breathtaking, deserve a close-up on our TV screens. Industrious by nature, the people that call this untouched Bahamian landscape home can't wait to show it off. Come go with us to one of the most uniquely Bahamian destinations, Crooked Island. It may be far flung, but this journey will bring them closer to home. Our news to the islands presents the true essence of Crooked Island, a week of down-home conversations and adventures, and you deserve to see it all. Hey, it's Charlie Bahama, and you gotta stay tuned this week where we have the three amazing Bahamian police chiefs, and here we have Chief Moss. He's got a lot to say. You are like, you know, the police chief of Miami Beach, like the city everybody in the world knows and wants yeah. to be a part of. I, I tell people this is the coolest city in the world. Mm -hmm. The only city that comes actually close to being as cool as Miami Beach is Nassau. <laughs> right, now we are here with Chief Adderley in West Palm Beach, so you know this show is going to be hot. Charlie Bahama, you want to catch it this week. Charlie Bahama Show. 
A whole new season of Goombay Kids is coming soon. The kids find themselves on more exciting island adventures, meeting mythical characters, pirates, and mermaids as they explore their beautiful island nation. The Goombay Kids learn all about nutrition, marine life, the environment, cultures from around the world, and more, all with the help of the Goombay Kid experts, who are never more than a Goombay gadget away. Get ready to have a Goombay adventure. If you thought season one was amazing, then be prepared for season two. More amazing artists, more amazing videos, and surprises you won't believe. Will Starks be the first rapper to ever hit number one? Or will Kenya continue her dominant reign? Or will someone new come and shut it all down? Stay tuned for season two of 242 The Gospel. So you said you're here for Sally's funeral? How do you know Sally? He was my rock and my anchor. Yeah, he was a good man. <laughs> he most certainly was not. Watch what you say about Sally. Who is this child? Your sisters. I'm asking you to do a few things for me. Once they are done, you will both receive your inheritance. The Paradise Hotel. When can I sell? Is this what the hotel is really worth? Don't take this the wrong way. It isn't really much of a hotel. This is 242 The Gospel, where we celebrate our redeeming artists. You've been asking for more, and we're here to deliver. Welcome to the second season of 242 The Gospel. Who will be number one? Our news to the island series on Crooked Island is winding down, but not before we get to Pittstown. On the way, though, we stopped in Landrail Point, where we learned about more choices for accommodation, which we'll spotlight in just a bit. But before we get to that, tonight we hear from you, the residents most affected by the 2024-2025 budget. Is the government borrowing too much? Was ex excessive spending involved? And is enough being done for our family islands? Our Joshua Williams had those questions as he hit the streets to gather your feedback. Here's this report. The cabinet has made the iconic walk to Rawson Square. The red briefcase has been opened and the prime minister has delivered the budget presentation for the upcoming fiscal year. But what do residents think? The prime minister presented extensive information, highlighting increased revenue and debt reduction, while also foreshadowing major capital works and more duty concessions. A key focus is the allocation of $70 million. 33 million for the current fiscal year and 37 million for the upcoming year. But should there be cause for concern? No, I don't think so because the, con the country is in such a bad state now. We need to get developed, you know. So. And how do you feel about investments in the Family Island airports? Do um, millions of dollars will be invested in North Eleuthera and Exuma airports for improvement. I'm about that because by, we are already in debt now. So I, I don't feel they need to borrow no more money because at the end of the day, what happened to the VAT money, they've been uh, stirring both. This year's duty-free list includes items like drones, which social media users found amusing. The new budget also sets aside $344 million for capital development and $125 million in a guaranteed loan for improvements to the Exuma and North Luther airports. Residents are supportive of these developments. The family island was way behind the eight ball a long time, and it's time to be upgraded, you know. Tourism is our number one industry and, you know, bringing in people for the tourism, I believe that, you know, you could do good on that one. Now the Prime Minister also sharing that government expenditure is up by 76.9%. Residents say they find this concerning. You know, you have the, you have the hurricane and you have the, the academic going on and you lose a lot of time during that time, you see. So you're just catching up on things. That, I can believe that. There's probably more. Knowing the Prime Minister and the current flight situation, but I ain't getting too much of that. Government them need to get their act together, man. You know, we have, and all, all governments, them, these are the human people them, who really been in Parliament for a long time. Probably we need to try something new. We need to try new people. Reporting for our news, I'm Joshua Williams. All right, thanks for that, Josh. Now, our Marlena Leonard, she spoke with Grand Bahamians on the 2024-2025 budget. We'll have more on that coming up in our news at 7.30, stay tuned. 
When our news comes back from the break, we turn our spotlight to stories making headlines across the world as former U.S. President Donald Trump convicted of 34 charges in the hush money trial. Plus, American Airlines sued for racial discrimination. And Haiti's new prime minister vows to seek unity as gang violence continues. The story when our news returns. And you got to stay tuned this week where we have the three amazing Bahamian police chiefs. And here we have Chief Moss. He's got a lot to say. You are like, you know, the police chief of Miami Beach, like the city everybody in the world knows and wants yeah. to be a part of. I, I tell people this is the coolest city in the world. Mm -hmm. The only city that comes actually close to being as cool as Miami Beach is Nassau. <laughs> right, now we are here with Chief Adderley in West Palm Beach, so you know this show is going to be hot. Charlie Bahama, you want to catch it this week. Charlie Bahama Show. A whole new season of Goombay Kids is coming soon. The kids find themselves on more exciting island adventures, meeting mythical characters, pirates, and mermaids as they explore their beautiful island nation. The Goombay Kids learn all about nutrition, marine life, the environment, cultures from around the world, and more, all with the help of the Goombay Kid experts, who are never more than a Goombay gadget away. Get ready to have a Goombay adventure. If you thought season one was amazing, then be prepared for season two. More amazing artists, more amazing videos, and surprises you won't believe. Will Stocks be the first rapper to ever hit number one? Or will Kenya continue her dominant reign? Or will someone new come and shut it all down? Stay tuned for season two of 242 The Gospel. So you said you're here for Sally's funeral? How do you know Sally? He was my rock and my anchor. Yeah, he was a good man. <laughs> he most certainly was not. Watch what you say about Sally. Who is this child? Your sisters. I'm asking you to do a few things for me. Once they are done, you will both receive your inheritance. The Paradise Hotel. When can I sell? Is this what the hotel is really worth? Don't take this the wrong way. It isn't really much of a hotel. This is 242 The Gospel, where we celebrate our Bahamian artists. You've been asking for more, and we're here to deliver. Welcome to the second season of 242 The Gospel. Who will be number one? Let's find out. You've seen electric cars on the road, but isn't it time you drive one? Easy Car Sales invites you to experience the smooth, powerful ride and immerse yourself in the luxury and latest tech features. Find out why the Bahamas is going electric. Visit easy242.com and book your test drive now. What are you waiting for? Save money, drive smarter. There's an EV waiting for you at Easy Car Sales. Energy conservation is the decision and practice of using less energy. Energy efficiency means using less energy to perform the same task. Turning off lights when you leave a room. Unplugging appliances not in use. People conserve to gain more control over their energy bill and to reduce demand on the Earth's natural resources. Bahamas Power and Light Company Limited Look. <laughs> This is our news. Welcome back. We turn our attention now to stories making headlines across the world. <music> Former President Donald Trump has been convicted of falsifying business records, marking the first criminal trial outcome for a former U.S. president. The historic verdict comes with a sentencing scheduled for July 11. Trump denounced the decision as a disgrace singling out Justice Merkin, who oversaw the trial. The unanimous verdict followed two days of deliberation by 12 jurors, following a six-week trial featuring testimony from 22 witnesses. Three black men suing American Airlines, alleging racial discrimination. They claimed the airline removed them from a flight due to a complaint about body odor, singling out every black man on board. 
American Airlines denies the allegation, but says it is investigating. The men who didn't know each other say they felt humiliated and embarrassed. Despite attempts to rebook, they say they were forced to retake their original seats. The lawsuit seeks unspecified damages for the trauma endured. And Haiti's newly appointed Prime Minister Gary Corneille pledges unity as he takes on the daunting task of leading the government amidst escalating gang violence. Corneille's appointment follows a period of political tension within the council, highlighting Haiti's struggle for stability and transparency in governance. International leaders, including Kenyan President William Ruto, extended support, recognizing the significance of Haiti's journey towards sustainable development. And back here at home, millions of dollars could soon be available for Bahamians working in the blue economy. This news, along with an update on the progress with blue carbon credits coming out of the recent Forum for Impact Dialogue in Grand Bahama. Marlena Leonard has highlights in tonight's edition of Sustainability First. Bahamas first, putting sustainability first for our people and our environment. What's first for you and the planet comes first for us. More investments for the blue economy and blue carbon credits on the horizon. These updates coming from Economic Affairs Minister Michael Halkidis at the third annual Forum for Impact Americas Dialogue in Grand Bahama recently. Halkidis' remarks covering how the Bahamas is leveraging impact and the ocean economy to establish a leadership position in Caribbean economic development including a future investment through the Inter-American Development Bank Blue Economy Loan Facility. I spoke briefly about uh, my interaction um, yesterday, uh, meeting to get an update with the IDB, a very, very, very exciting initiative, a $30 million um, program to go towards the development of the blue economy, specifically targeted at the expansion of micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises within uh, the blue economy. We estimate that approximately 120 enterprises will benefit from these funds and Bahamians will also benefit from technical support and training opportunities. The Economic Affairs Minister also giving updates on the highly anticipated development of blue carbon credits, where government is hoping to monetize the carbon absorbing capacity of seagrass meadows in Bahamian waters. We are talking about up to 93,000 square kilometers of seagrass, the largest seagrass meadows in the world. And so once the research is completed and verified, we will begin the process of evaluating and putting a price to our carbon absorbing capacity. This value will be represented by blue carbon credits. We can then monetize. And so based on our current pace, we could be in a position to monetize by the end of next year. Reporting for our news and reminding you to put sustainability first, I'm Marlena Leonard. Still to come on our news today in history, find out interesting facts about the day that was May 30th. Then in our news at 7.30, Grand Bahamians react to budget news on the International Bazaar and West Sunrise Highway reopening. Some express excitement, others on the fence. Plus, Disney's Lookout Key set to employ over 200 Bahamians as thousands of visitors soon expected to descend on Lighthouse Point. When our news returns. Water this clear, people this friendly, views this breathtaking, deserve a close-up on our TV screens. Industrious by nature, the people that call this untouched Bahamian landscape home can't wait to show it off. Come go with us to one of the most uniquely Bahamian destinations, Crooked Island. It may be far flung, but this journey will bring them closer to home. Our News to the Islands presents The True Essence of Crooked Island, a week of down-home conversations and adventures. And you deserve to see it all. Hey, it's Charlie Bahama, and you got to stay tuned this week where we have the three amazing Bahamian police chiefs. And here we have Chief Moss. He's got a lot to say. You are like, you know, the police chief of Miami Beach, like the city everybody in the world knows and wants yeah. to be a part of. I, I tell people this is the coolest city in the world. Mm -hmm. The only city that comes actually close to being as cool as Miami Beach is Nassau. <laughs> right, now we are here with Chief Adderley in West Palm Beach, so you know this show is going to be hot. Charlie Bahama, you want to catch it this week. Charlie Bahama Show. A whole new season of Goombe Kids is coming soon. The kids find themselves on more exciting island adventures, meeting mythical characters, pirates, and mermaids as they explore their beautiful island nation. 
The Goombe Kids learn all about nutrition, marine life, the environment, cultures from around the world, and more, all with the help of the Goombe Kid experts, who are never more than a Goombe gadget away. Get ready to have a Goombe adventure. If you thought season one was amazing, then be prepared for season two. More amazing artists, more amazing videos and surprises you won't believe. Will Stocks be the first rapper to ever hit number one? Or will Kenya continue her dominant reign? Or will someone new come and shut it all down? Stay tuned for season two of 242 The Gospel. So you said you're here for Sally's funeral? How do you know Sally? He was my rock and my anchor. Yeah, he was a good man. <laughs> he most certainly was not. Watch what you say about Sally. Who is this child? Your sisters. I'm asking you to do a few things for me. Once they are done, you will both receive your inheritance. The Paradise Hotel. When can I sell? Is this what the hotel is really worth? Don't take this the wrong way. It isn't really much of a hotel. Welcome back to our news. The Honorable A. Loftus Roker, a constitution signer and former cabinet minister, will be honored with a state funeral at Christ Church Cathedral tomorrow at 11 a.m., preceded by a procession from the House of Assembly at 10 a.m. Following the service, there will be a flag ceremony at Western Cemetery. Just a quick note, several streets will be closed to traffic, including Cumberland Street, Marlborough, West Bay Street, Nassau Street, Bay Street, Parliament Street, Charlotte Street, Frederick Street, and Market Street. If you're planning uh, to make it down in the downtown area, be sure and take note of those closures. It's time now to turn our spotlight on events that shaped the day that was May 30th. Take a look. On this day in Bahamian history in 1930, the Grantstown Library was officially opened by then Governor Charles Orr. In 1951, it was reopened the Lillian G. Ware Coakley Public Library after lobbying by now deceased former members of Parliament Bert Cambridge and Dr. Claudius Walker. Then fast forward to 2019, when hundreds of hotel workers went on strike, lining up outside the National Stadium. The action came days after union leaders burned a proposal from the Hotel Association. Union President Darren Wood said workers' wages and benefits did not reflect the so-called banner year in tourism. Also in 2019, then-Deputy Prime Minister Peter Turnquist defended government's $240 million revenue shortfall, insisting the government did not have a crystal ball to predict what projections would be met. Then in 2020, government's state of emergency in response to the recently declared global COVID-19 pandemic extended to May 30th. The COVID-19 emergency orders 20. 20 was amended a month before to include fines for people who violated quarantine. And finally, on this day in 2022, the country learned of a weapons crackdown in the face of an increasing crime wave. Prime Minister Philip Davis promised the crackdown on gun trafficking at a regional meeting of police chiefs. All right, I know we promised you the Our News to the Islands series. Uh, we are in Land Rail Point for this next installment. Fortunately, we are out of time, so please be sure and stay tuned to Our News tomorrow to see our journey continue in Land Rail Point. Pittstown is our ultimate stop, but tomorrow we will spotlight accommodation options in Land Rail Point. That's going to do it for us in News at 7. Joining us now with the latest headlines is Marlena Leonard. Marlena? Thank you, Ken. Well, Grand Bahamians are reacting to budget news, plus Disney's lookout key set to employ over 200 Bahamians. Here are your latest headlines. Tonight on Our News. Grand Bahamians divided. First tonight on Our News Live at 7.30, mixed reactions to budget news on the International Bazaar and West Sunrise Highway reopening. This as the opposition leader criticizes government's $30 million proposed acquisition of the International Bazaar. Plus, Disney's lookout key to employ hundreds of Bahamians as it prepares to welcome thousands of visitors real soon. And West End Fish Fry takes over Nassau. Montague Beach hosts the mega event this Sunday. We'll tell you more when our news live at 7.30 returns. You've seen electric cars on the road. 
but isn't it time you drive one? Easy Car Sales invites you to experience the smooth, powerful ride and immerse yourself in the luxury and latest tech features. Find out why the Bahamas is going electric. Visit easy242.com and book your test drive now. What are you waiting for? Save money, drive smarter. There's an EV waiting for you at Easy Car Sales. Energy conservation is the decision and practice of using less energy. Energy efficiency means using less energy to perform the same task. Turning off lights when you leave a room. Unplugging appliances not in use. People conserve to gain more control over their energy bill and to reduce demand on the Earth's natural resources. Bahamas Power and Light Company Limited looks forward to helping our customers eliminate wasted energy. Take this journey with us as we build for better. BPL. I'm Michaela Kerr. I'm an 18-year-old freshman at the University of the Bahamas, and I'm a computer science major. I'm also the NT Corporation Youth Ambassador for the Environment, and I'm an environmentalist. My journey as the environmental advocate began with a simple yet profound realization that our environment is degrading right in front of my eyes. And being NT's Youth Ambassador for the Environment means that my words and my actions hold the power to help change the environment and the world around me. I find it exciting that I can be a student, live my life, and use my words and my voice to change the environment and the world around me. Most times I think it's a privilege, it's our environment, and it's our generation to own. I don't think as a young person that there's anything more rewarding than being a part of bringing awareness. I'm Michaela Kerr, and I'm making a difference in my own words. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Marlena Leonard. Reactions from Grand Bahamians to yesterday's budget news about the International Bazaar and the reopening of West Sunrise Highway. Some are excited, while others are hoping the project doesn't prove to be a distraction. Let's take a look. Well, I'm excited about the budget yesterday. And it's interesting to see now that Grand Bahama will be getting the attention that is needed as it relates to the bazaar being purchased and reopened, I think it's going to play a huge impact on the economy of Grand Bahama and for the Grand Bahamians at large. Marvin Bridgewater is one of many Grand Bahamians excited by the idea of the return of the iconic landmark. During his budget presentation, Prime Minister Davis announcing government expects to source $30 million to fund the purchase of the International Bazaar and reopen the West Sunrise Highway. Editor of the Grand Bahaman News Courier Fred Stirrup saying he felt the budget was encouraging and was thrilled to hear about the planned purchase and development of the bazaar. I just think that is truly, truly awesome because what it'll mean, it will open a lot of financial avenues for um, the people of Grand Bahama, and I think it'll do a little bit about bringing back the magic to Grand Bahama because um, once that was an international pastime for many people who came into Grand Bahama, and I think uh, with the investments, I think some of the Africans want to invest in the bazaar, and I think when the government develops, develops it to a point where it would be attractive, I think we will have a site that is once again the envy of the entire world. Our news reached out to one of the owners of the bazaar, telling us although bazaar owners are in talks with the government, no deal has been affirmed yet. For some residents, while the promise of restoration is exciting, there are more pressing matters at hand for the island. For me, the key importance for the government right now is an airport for the island. With everything coming, the success of Carnival, uh, the shipyard will be back to where it was and even better than it was before. We need airlift and we need it badly. And so I hope they concentrate on the airport first before they start doing things here at the bazaar. Reporting for Our News, I'm Marlene. Leader of the opposition Free National Movement Michael Pintard continuing to hold the government's feet to the fire as Prime Minister Philip Davis presented the 2024-2025 budget communication to the House of Assembly yesterday. Pintard taking exception with several revelations in the speech, including the government's plan to acquire the dilapidated international bazaar that sits on Grand Bahama. Uh, just a few years ago, the 427-acre Royal Oasis Resort uh, was, was bought by Harcourt in 2007 for $33 million, 427 uh, acres. The bazaar itself 
uh, is 9.5 acres. So the question is, I mean, we don't understand the matter. There may be a logical explanation uh, as to why the government is prepared to pay $30 million for a, a fraction of a massive uh, development. The opposition leader also calling both government and the Port Authority to the table. He says while both parties hold a degree of responsibility for the state of Freeport, the idea that government can wrestle away assets from a group sends the wrong message to investors. When it comes to government's expectation of receiving $75 million this year, as part of a larger sum the government says it's owed, Pintard says... If that is the case, we would more than happily, uh, we'd be more than happy to join hands with them in receiving the money, except they fail to indicate in this budget exercise, nor have they previously laid on the table of the House, the invoice so we could see what is included in it. What we do know, however, is that both GBPA and the government are both culpable in uh, or being responsible for the state of affairs in Grand Bahama. So both central government and GBPA are duty bound to sit down in private with other stakeholders, the opposition, licensees of the port, uh, the industrials, the Chamber of Commerce, and resolve this issue. The more they beat up their gum in public, the more they are going to cause uncertainty in the market in Grand Bahama. Well, what was set out to be a regular weekly press briefing at the office of the Prime Minister quickly escalated into a conflict between the financial secretary and a reporter. The reporter accused Wilson of lying, ending in Wilson telling him he'll be waiting outside for him. Berthony McDermott ha was in the room and has the details. Mr. Wilson, no, you called me a liar. So why? No, 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 like you called me a liar. And it quickly went downhill from there. The office of the Prime Minister's weekly press briefing rocked by chaos this morning after a NASA Guardian reporter posed this question to Financial Secretary Simon Wilson. The last time you were here, uh, you lied to us when you asked me about JDL in particular. I, you lied to the media? You lied to the media? How do I? You told, that's uh, a very you told strong, the media. A strong word. Wilson and Economic Affairs Minister Michael Halkidis were brought on to answer questions about the 2023-2024 budget communication Wednesday. But things quickly took a turn after the first question. Wilson visibly taken aback. We have a history. I fired you. Okay. I fired you for lying. A well-documented history. And you come here and call me a liar. Acting Press Secretary in the Office of the Prime Minister, Keishla Adderley, sought to calm the situation and move on to the other questions. But Wilson seemed only to get more upset. I can't, I can't, I can't be here with this. My, are you smiling? <laughs> you, you. The Financial Secretary's efforts to move past the moment were seemingly unsuccessful after he walked away from the podium as the exchange didn't end there. Wilson approached the reporter, prompting Halkidis to get in between. Don't, 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 don't get too close. No, no, don't. You come here and try to come out me and you. Don't do it. Sir. Sir. I walk with you. The reporter was later escorted out a side door by communications director Latre Ramming. Halkidis took to the podium and continued the briefing. In the end, Halkidis sought to defend Wilson's character while Adderley condemned what she called a personal attack against a government official. Uh, and I can say for the financial secretary, working with him over many years, um, you know, never had any reason to question his integrity. I condemn in the strongest terms what happened here this morning. Uh, the intent was for the financial secretary uh, to speak about or flesh out some of the issues discussed in the uh, budget communication. Reporting for Our News, I'm Berthony McDermott. Meanwhile, Wilson issuing a statement calling the incident unfortunate, calling the accusation a direct and unprovoked attack on his reputation, character and service to country, and later apologized. The free national movement also weighing in. In a statement, FNM chairman Dr. Dwayne Sands said Bahamians were shocked and horrified to see the dismissive, aggressive and belligerent posture of the financial secretary, who he called the most senior public servant. Sands says Wilson should be mandated to undergo anger management therapy and conflict resolution training during a mandatory suspension or dismissal from public duty. You can read both statements at Our News Bahamas on Facebook. Well, we had another day of sweltering heat across the country with the official start of summer still weeks away. Meteorologist Greg Thompson is in the Weather Center with your first look at weather. Greg?
Yeah, thanks Marlene and welcome everybody for a quick look at conditions around the islands and outside our studios. We are still warm. Temperatures in the mid 80s, 86 degrees, mostly clear skies. Your winds are out of the north, northeast at 9 miles per hour. Feels like temperature is a very warm 95 degrees. Satellite radar composite showing two weak boundaries moving into the northwest Palmas and the central Palmas. Surface troughs are a little disturbance in the low level flow. A couple isolated showers associated with both boundaries. Most of the activity is waning as we speak. Those boundaries will continue to push towards the south and high pressure is going to remain in control of our weather for at least another couple of days. That's your first quick check on conditions around the island. Stick with us and look at your extended forecast is still to come. Still to come on our news, just days away from welcoming visitors, Disney's Lookout Key at Lighthouse Point on Eleuthera aims to employ over 200 Bahamians. And later, the historic landmark about to be restored after decades of being closed to the public. The contract has been signed. That's coming up when our news returns. Water this clear, people this friendly, views this breathtaking, deserve a close-up on our TV screens. Industrious by nature, the people that call this untouched Bahamian landscape home can't wait to show it off. Come go with us to one of the most uniquely Bahamian destinations, Crooked Island. It may be far flung, but this journey will bring them closer to home. Our news to the islands presents the true essence of Crooked Island, a week of down-home conversations and adventures, and you deserve to see it all. Hey, it's Charlie Bahama, and you gotta stay tuned this week where we have the three amazing Bahamian police chiefs, and here we have Chief Moss. He's got a lot to say. You were like, you know, the police chief of Miami Beach, like the city everybody in the world knows and wants yeah. to be a part of. I, I tell people this is the coolest city in the world. Mm -hmm. The only city that comes actually close to being as cool as Miami Beach is Nassau. <laughs> right, now we are here with Chief Adderley in West Palm Beach, so you know this show is gonna be hot. Charlie Bahama, you wanna catch it this week. Charlie Bahama Show. A whole new season of Goombay Kids is coming soon. The kids find themselves on more exciting island adventures, meeting mythical characters, pirates, and mermaids as they explore their beautiful island nation. The Goombay Kids learn all about nutrition, marine life, the environment, cultures from around the world, and more, all with the help of the Goombay Kid experts, who are never more than a Goombay gadget away. Get ready to have a Goombay adventure. If you thought season one was amazing, then be prepared for season two. More amazing artists, more amazing videos, and surprises you won't believe. Will Starks be the first rapper to ever hit number one? Or will Kenya continue her dominant reign? Or will someone new come and shut it all down? Stay tuned for season two of 242 The Gospel. In just a few days, Disney's Lookout Key at Lighthouse Point on Eleuthera will welcome thousands of visitors. Disney executives alongside government officials traveling to the site this morning for the unveiling of the much-anticipated project as it promises to reshape the landscape of Eleuthera. With its blend of luxury accommodations and immersive attractions, the resort is poised to become a premier destination for travelers looking for a unique and unforgettable experience. Prime Minister Philip Davis sharing brief remarks at the grand opening ceremony, touting the economic success of the multi-million dollar project. PM Davis also said the company will seek to employ over 200 Bahamians. Today, we shine a little brighter as we prepare to bring new opportunities, new businesses, and new visitors to Eleuthera's stunning shores. Lookout Key at Lighthouse Point is a perfect example of what happens when vision, passion, and collaboration come together. This project is a testament to the power of partnership. Disney Cruise Lines, Disney Lookout Key at Lighthouse Point will open with an all Bahamian leadership team and will create nearly 200 high quality roles for Bahamians. Another historic landmark is about to be restored to the iconic attraction it once was. The Fort Fincastle water tower is next in line for restoration, following the success of the recent renovation of the Queen's Staircase. Here's what we know about the planned makeover. 
The iconic water tower at Fort Fincastle is almost 100 years old, dating back to 1928 and stands over 200 feet above sea level. At one time, sightseeing at the water tower and Queen's Staircase was one of the most popular excursions in the region. But having been closed for many years, the Ministry of Works is now signing a contract to restore it to its former glory. The Antiquities, Monuments and Museums Corporation has expressed a strong desire to see the Fort Fincastle water tower restored to its former glory. And today, we are taking a significant step towards restoring and preserving this vital piece of our heritage. This initiative is not only about preserving an historic monument, but also about revitalizing a symbol of our national pride and identity. SJK Engineering and Construction is tapped to do the work. Their president, Stefan Knowles, says... It was amazed to see, you know, the activity that, uh, the, that, you, that, uh, that you have around there, and um, it's an area that I think could be, could be improved. Um, this is definitely going to improve it. Um, it's an area that could be improved for more Bahamian entrepreneurs to, um, to make a living, you know, a, a, a good living um, from tourist souvenirs and everything I like. The Antiquities, Monuments and Museum Corporation has been pushing for the Landmarks renovation for a long time, as their director, Dr. Christopher Curry, explains. It's been a long time since the water tower has been closed. I estimate it's been over 20 years and so with the fulfillment of the scope of work and the intended mobilization and construction pending, what we're going to find is a three-in-one heritage site. With the Queen's Staircase already having um, the renovation undertaken there. We now look to the water tower to complete the three-in-one site with Fincastle already operational. And so we look forward to Bahamians visiting our site in the near future. Reporting for Our News, I'm Marlena Leonard. It's now time for tonight's Financial Market Minute, brought to you by RF, your local investment bank. This has been your Financial Market Minute. To explore the best performing mutual funds in the Bahamas, visit our website at www.rfgroup.com. When our news comes back from the break, the West End Fish Fry will be taking over the island this Sunday at Montague Beach. Coming up in sports, we take a look at the possible field for the women's 100 meter hurdles at the B3A Senior Nationals, and John Quill Jones leads the Liberty to a much needed win. Water this clear, people this friendly. Views this breathtaking deserve a close-up on our TV screens. Industrious by nature, the people that call this untouched Bahamian landscape home can't wait to show it off. Come go with us to one of the most uniquely Bahamian destinations, Crooked Island. It may be far flung, but this journey will bring them closer to home. Our News to the Islands presents the true essence of Crooked Island, a week of down-home conversations and adventures. And you deserve to see it all. Hey, it's Charlie Bahama, and you got to stay tuned this week where we have the three amazing Bahamian police chiefs. And here we have Chief Moss. He's got a lot to say. You are like, you know, the police chief of Miami Beach, like the city everybody in the world knows and wants yeah. to be a part of. I, I tell people this is the coolest city in the world. Mm -hmm. The only city that comes actually close to being as cool as Miami Beach is now South. <laughs> right, now we are here with Chief Adderley in West Palm Beach, so you know this show is going to be hot. Charlie Bahama, you want to catch it this week. Charlie Bahama Show. A whole new season of Goombay Kids is coming soon. The kids find themselves on more exciting island adventures, meeting mythical characters, pirates, and mermaids as they explore their beautiful island nation. The Goombay Kids learn all about nutrition, marine life, the environment, cultures from around the world, and more, all with the help of the Goombay Kid experts, who are never more than a Goombay gadget away. Get ready to have a Goombay adventure. If you thought season one was amazing, then be prepared for season two. More amazing artists, more amazing videos, and surprises you won't believe. Will Stocks be the first rapper to ever hit number one? Or will Kenya continue her dominant reign? Or will someone new come and shut it all down? 
Stay tuned for season two of 242 The Gospel. So you said you're here for Sully's funeral? How do you know Sully? He was my rock and my anchor. Yeah, he was a good man. <laughs> he most certainly was not. Watch what you say about Sully. Who is this child? Your sisters. I'm asking you to do a few things for me. Once they are done, you will both receive your inheritance. The Paradise Hotel. When can I sell? Is this what the hotel is really worth? Don't take this the wrong way. <laughs> This is our news. Welcome back. Some of the top hurdlers in Bahamian track and field history are set to face off with the B3A Senior Nationals. Here now with our sports presented by 10th Year Seniors is Ronaldo Dorset and John Mark Nutt. Ronaldo? Thanks, Marlena, and welcome to our sports presented by 10th Year Seniors. I'm Ronaldo Dorset. That's John Mark Nutt. Let's do show. It's been a historic year for Bahamian women in the sprint hurdles, and the public will have an opportunity to see a stacked field compete next month at the B3A's Nationals. Uh, for the first time in our history, we will be marching three exciting hurdlers uh, to Paris, and I think that more will be to come. Leading the field, of course, 60-meter hurdles world record holder and 100-meter hurdles finalist at the Tokyo Olympics, Devin Charlton. Charlton has run a season's best 12.49 seconds in April in China on the first leg of the Wanda Diamond League Series. Denisha Cartwright is the Bahamas' second fastest qualifier in the event at 12.60 seconds, turned in earlier this month at the NSIC Conference Championships. World Indoor 60-meter hurdles finalist Charisma Taylor is the third fastest qualifier. Taylor ran a season's best 12.76 seconds in April in Gainesville, Florida. Liberty University's India Cartwright has also run a season's best 13.11 seconds. Two-time Olympian Padria Seymour continues to make her return. The Olympic finalist from 2016 has run a season's best of 13.35 seconds back in March in Louisiana. After back-to-back -back losses, Jonquil Jones and New York Liberty are back in the win column. Jones finished with 20 points and 7 rebounds in the Liberty's 81-78 win over the Phoenix Mercury Wednesday night at the Barclays Center. JJ scored 10 points in the fourth quarter, shot 63% from the field, and added 2 blocks. Powered by Jones and a dominance in the paint, the Liberty closed the game on a 9-0 run over the last two minutes. Yeah, I think it was just that we had a, um, a different level of intentionality with me getting down there. Um, you know, them giving me time to just post up and, and really seal, but... Um, ultimately, I think it was just a, a mind a mindset shift from both like me and, and my teammates. New York hosts Washington on Friday night in the middle of a three-game homestand. An impressive freshman season with the Bay College Norse earned Zach Gibson a postseason conference honor. Gibson was named to the Michigan Community College Athletic Association first team as well as the Northern Conference all-freshman team. He had 358 for the season with a 447 on-base percentage and a 642 slugging percentage. Gibson led the team with seven home runs, 31 runs scored, 35 RBI, and tied for the team lead in hits with 38. He also had nine doubles. The Norse finished their season 24-18, and 18, the best record in school history. They finished the year on a 10-game win streak but just missed the postseason berth with an 11-9 conference record. The Marlins avoided the series sweep against the Padres with 16 hits. And of course, Jazz was in the mix. Chisholm finished 2-6 for six with 2 RBI and scored 2 runs in the Marlins 9-1 win over the San Diego Padres Wednesday at Petco Park. The Marlins went 3-3 three three on a brief West Coast swing through Arizona and San Diego. Miami opens a home series against the Texas Rangers Friday night at Lone Depot Park. That'll do it for our sports presented by 10th Year Seniors. For John Mark Nutt, I'm Ronaldo Dorset. Back to the studio. Still ahead on our news tonight, family fun, tasty dishes, and soul-stirring Bahamian music. All promised to be part of the West End Fish Fry Takeover this Sunday at Montague Beach. And we're fighting the summer heat before summer has arrived. But will the weekend offer some relief? We have the latest from Greg on weather when our news returns. Water this clear, people this friendly. Views this breathtaking deserve a close-up on our TV screens. Industrious by nature, the people that call this untouched Bahamian landscape home can't wait to show it off. Come go with us to one of the most uniquely Bahamian destinations, Crooked Island. It may be far flung, but this journey will bring them closer to home. Our news to the islands presents the true essence of Crooked Island, a week of down-home conversations and adventures and you deserve to see it all. Hey, it's Charlie Bahama, and you gotta stay tuned this week where we have the three amazing Bahamian police chiefs, and here we have Chief Moss, 
he's got a lot to say. You were like, you know, the police chief of Miami Beach, like the city everybody in the world knows and wants yeah. to be a part of. I, I tell people this is the coolest city in the world. Mm -hmm. The only city that comes actually close to being as cool as Miami Beach is Nassau. <laughs> right, now we are here with Chief Adderley in West Palm Beach, so you know this show is going to be hot. Charlie Bahama, you want to catch it this week. Charlie Bahama Show. A whole new season of Goombay Kids is coming soon. The kids find themselves on more exciting island adventures, meeting mythical characters, pirates, and mermaids as they explore their beautiful island nation. The Goombay Kids learn all about nutrition, marine life, the environment, cultures from around the world, and more, all with the help of the Goombay Kid experts, who are never more than a Goombay gadget away. Get ready to have a Goombay adventure. If you thought season one was amazing, then be prepared for season two. More amazing artists, more amazing videos, and surprises you won't believe. Will Stocks be the first rapper to ever hit number one? Or will Kenya continue her dominant reign? Or will someone new come and shut it all down? Stay tuned for season two of 242 The Gospel. So you said you're here for Sully's funeral? How do you know Sully? He was my rock and my anchor. Yeah, he was a good man. <laughs> he most certainly was not. Watch what you say about Sully. Who is this child? Your sisters. I'm asking you to do a few things for me. Once they are done, you will both receive your inheritance. The Paradise Hotel. When can I sell? Is this what the hotel is really worth? Don't take this the wrong way. It isn't really much of a hotel. This is 242 The Gospel, where we celebrate our redeeming artists. You've been asking for more, and we're here to deliver. Welcome to the second season of 242 The Gospel. Who will be number one? Let's find out. Welcome back to Our News. The official start of summer may be weeks away, but outside temperatures beg to differ. Greg is back in the Weather Center with your extended forecast. Greg? Yeah, thanks again Marlene and welcome back everybody for a final check at weather. We are taking a look at the tropics first. We have a couple of active tropical storms out there in the open Atlantic. One just off the African coast moving towards the uh, west. We have another one that's uh, central Atlantic that's going to continue to move. Not much activity associated with both of these. And then there's one moving across the uh, Leeward Islands, some showers and thunderstorms associated with that. That's continuing to push towards the uh, west as well. And then we're still watching that blob in the southwestern Caribbean. Uh, not really organized, disorganized showers and thunderstorms. Some of it is weakening as we speak, but it is still pumping some moisture across the southeastern Bahamas. So we're looking at a couple more showers across, mainly in Nagua and the Turks and Caicos Islands over the next couple of days. And then closer to home, we have uh, nothing really much happening. That high pressure system is in charge, a couple of weeks surface troughs moving across the area but we do expect the frontal boundary to be pushing into the northwest Bahamas by tomorrow evening and into the weekend and once that moves through high pressure will build across us and we're looking at some very breezy conditions for the upcoming weekend. Future forecast showing the moisture spotty across most of the island chain through tonight and into tomorrow. Uh, we got most of the activity with that frontal boundary pushing towards the east and away from us and staying mostly in the open Atlantic and once again high pressure will build behind that and looking for some rather breezy conditions for the weekend. Boating for the Northwest Bahamas tonight to tomorrow. Winds will be northeast to east, 10 to 15 knots. Seas running two to four feet over the ocean. Your low tide is at 8.23 tonight. High tide takes place at 2.34 in the morning. For the central and southeast Bahamas, an east to south easterly flow at 10 to 15 knots. Wave heights running two to four feet over open waters. Here's a look now at your national forecast. In the extended forecast, weak frontal boundary pushing into the northwest Bahamas. Not much weather expected with it. A couple isolated showers, but uh, once that front goes through, high pressure will build back in behind that. Breezy conditions Saturday, Sunday. Looks as though that may continue into uh, the early part of next week, but whatever moisture is associated with that boundary will back up towards us. So we're looking at a couple more showers for the early part of next week. That's a look at our weather. Make it a great night and stay safe, everybody. Thanks, Greg. 
Well, West End natives living here in the capital are in for a treat this weekend. This as the West End fish fry will be taking over the island this Sunday at Montague Beach. Vendors from the Grand Bahamian community are expected to take part in the mega event, which organizers say will be a time of family fun, tasty dishes and soul-stirring Bahamian music. One of the event's organizers, Richard Johnson, tells us what to expect on the menu. We will have a variety of our native dishes on sale, offering a taste of West End tradition. You can look forward to your fish and pancake, so we call it fish and panty cake, our conch salads and our famous pickle conch, our conky conch fritters, real deal, and much more. The entertainment, the entertainment open ceremonies will start at 5 p.m. And the main show will start at 8 p.m. And as Grand Bahamas economy continues to have its challenges, organizers believe the festival is a good opportunity to put dollars in the pockets of vendors. West End, as you know, is the capital of Grand Bahama, but it has been in the dundrum for a while. Um, but hopefully with these events, uh, the upcoming homecoming in August, um, that island, that community will, will thrive on that economy. Um, it's, it's great and it's a great initiative to also put ourselves back on the map and to also demonstrate and display what we have to offer in Western Grand Bahama. Sounds like it'll be a good time. Well, thank you for joining us for our news tonight. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Marlena Leonard. We'll see you tomorrow night. Have a great evening. With Jerome Sawyer starts right now.